Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be doing the uh, ultimate repair guide for the iPod Classic 5th Gen. Now, this is probably one of, if not the easiest iPods to fix. Pretty much the only thing you can stuff up on this is like snapping off the battery connector. And that's about it. The, the hardest part is at this stage is just finding one that's in good enough condition. Because, you know, this is probably the most sought after iPod model. And buying them on eBay and stuff... Oh, yeah, a lot of the good ones have already been taken out of the mix. Like, a lot of the ones you'll be buying on eBay are like, they may have been worked on before, or they'll just be the ones with the bad issues that nobody else really wants to have a look at. Either that, or they'll just be expensive. Yeah, but assuming you've managed to acquire a nice iPod Classic 5th Gen that you want to upgrade, this is how you do it. So yeah, starting off, to open this thing up, it's probably the easiest iPod to open up, to be honest. All you need is a box cutter knife, and then you just go in the sides like that, and it just comes apart simply like that. Don't rip it off too quickly, because you do have some flex cables connecting from the back and the front, and if you just yank the thing off, you might end up ripping some connectors off in there. But yeah, so the first thing what you want to do is disconnect that battery, simply as I've done just there, with the tweezers. Then moving along and doing unclipping the hard drive and putting that thing to the side. Actually, no, don't put the hard drive to the side. Just toss it straight in the bin, mate. It's 2023. You're not putting that thing back in there, mate. You're getting an SSD or you're getting a micro SD card, whatever it is. Just just don't use that hard drive. It'll it's old technology. It'll break in one drop. It's heavy. It's slow. Just buy the buy the SSD or the SD card. Yeah, they're actually very cheap at this stage, so just do that. And less fragile, that's probably the most important part. Yeah, then undo that little connector there for the um, headphone. Yeah, we'll take that battery out as well. And toss that in the bin as well, because that thing's probably going on 18 years, 18, 19 years old at this stage, so... Yeah, time for an upgrade. Some of these old batteries do still work, but, you know... Even if they do work, they're not going to be full capacity anymore, so yeah. Now we'll put that rear housing assembly to the side, and we'll work on this front bit. So, in order to take that front plastic off, first we'll have to undo that clip, and then remove the LCD flex cable there. I know in the video I show me undoing the clip with the tweezers. Um, although that works, it's probably better to use the plastic tool to do that. Just because, um, well, I know there's no power running through it in this, but if you get into the habit of using tweezers to undo those clips, you might accidentally do it one day where there's power running through the device, and then you might short circuit something, and you don't want to do that. So, yeah, better off to just use the plastic ones. But, yeah, I mean, you can do it like I do it with the metal tweezers. It's not going to break anything in this case. And now, just grabbing your screwdriver, and we're undoing those six screws, three on each side, just at the sides there. Now we can simply we can peel the logic board off from the front plastic. And if you've got a good LCD, I'd keep that in with the front plastic as well, just as a way to prevent any dust from getting on it so you won't have to clean it later when you put the new one on. Or if you're not replacing it, just don't remove those two because you can get dust underneath it. Uh, but yeah, coming over to the buttons. Um, if your buttons are fully functional, you don't have to worry about anything here, but um, there is a pretty common issue on this iPod, as these buttons are literally just made up of a metal dome, a piece of tape, and then a little plastic nub on top. Well, I don't think it's plastic, I think it's foam or something. What can, what can happen is that black dot can shift to the side, um, yeah, and it can prevent the button from clicking. So if that's happened and one of your buttons doesn't click, literally all you have to do is get your tweezers, move that foam nub back into the center and then yeah that's that's all you got to do it'll be fixed yeah as i demonstrate here so yeah that's a pretty common issue on this model i don't know why they designed it like that they could have just used the high quality buttons like they did in the classic fourth gen and the mini but um they'd, they'd rather save the five cents and give us these crappy ones but uh not to worry it is an easy fix <laughs> So another common issue with these buttons is you can get a layer of corrosion developing in between the metal dome and the trace on the PCB, and that can also prevent the button from clicking. Um, like, it'll, you'll still be able to click it in, and it'll still feel like a click, but it just won't register as a click on the iPod. And yeah, you can fix this, as I've shown in a lot of the other previous iPod repair tutorials. Um, all you have to do is peel up that metal dome, get out your tweezers, and scrape the pad, and then just clean it with uh, some isopropyl alcohol with a little Q-tip there. I think I showed it in the nano second gen guide. 
but it is a very common sort of issue for these. But yeah, luckily that's an easy fix as well. Yeah, and as you can see, I've got this cotton bud and I'm just cleaning some dirt that may have fallen in between the buttons and the front plastic there. So now taking your new front plastic, grabbing your LCD and just placing that in just like that. There are some plastic nubs that it lines up with. And one thing you do want to check here is if you've got any like dust or anything like that that's gone under the LCD and the front plastic there because you want it to look nice and you don't want any of that stuff to be visible. And um, yeah, if you do get dust or anything, you can just take a microfiber cloth and give both these surfaces a wipe down as you can see I'm doing here. And yeah, you don't really need a microfiber cloth. Your t-shirt is a microfiber cloth, so you can just do that. Just use your t-shirt, mate. Yeah, and if you bought aftermarket buttons, you can also install them at this stage as well. Just simply undo that clip there. They are adhered on a little bit, so get your tweezers and just gently pry that thing up and pull it out. Get your new buttons, put it in, close the clip up. Very straightforward on this model, which we like. And yep, once you're satisfied that that's all nice and clean, you just grab your logic board and place that back in with the new front plastic here. And just make sure you lift up the um, flex cable from the LCD and tuck it into the right position otherwise it'll get sandwiched between the buttons and you don't want that yeah now that those two bits are back together get out your six screws and simply just screw it back up give all your buttons a click make sure you've done it all properly and everything and you take your old housing and you just chuck that thing straight in the bin because it's not good for anything actually i've seen some people like restore those old fronts they'll sand them down and remove all the old scratches or whatever yeah, the issue that I had on my front here is seems to be a really common thing with this type of plastic that they've used on the 5th gen. It'll just get these like spiderweb lines going through it. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about, but seems to be a very common occurrence on the 5th gen. So now for our replacement rear housing. I don't have a new one here, I've just got one from another iPod, which will do for, for this video. But yeah, if you got a brand new one, same process will apply we just have to take out all the pieces from the um from the old rear housing here so down at the bottom there is this little piece of plastic that goes around the 30 pin dot connector it's just held in with two screws so yeah just undo that one thing to note is that bit of plastic is slightly larger on the uh, 80 gig model and the 60 gig model than on the 30 gig model and um yeah it's just because the rear housing is bigger on those a bit thicker because the hard drives were bigger so yeah if you do have like a 60 or an 80 gig one and you plant and you've bought like a, a slim aftermarket housing just keep that in mind if it doesn't come with that piece i'm sure you can get it to fit but yeah and a lot of the aftermarket ones are going to come with it anyways so there's nothing to worry about and that also applies with this headphone flex here as well the one on the 60 and 80 gig models the, th the fat the thick version yeah it won't you won't be able to mount that in the slim version the 30 gig model so yeah if you have bought a thinner rear housing just keep that in mind because you may have to buy a new headphone flex as well so yeah this just comes out with four screws two on the headphone side and two on the lock switch side undo that little bit of tape there yeah so this flex is it's kind of fragile so just be careful with it you don't want to rip it of course but you probably won't you know you probably won't rip it it's not too hard to get out it is adhered down i guess the most fragile part on it is where that lock switch button is so just be careful around that area it's kind of easy to rip when you're taking the battery out as well just grab that whole flex cable and transport it over to your new housing and put it in like so pretty straightforward yeah if you have bought a, a slim housing for the thick model this is the point where you realize that it's not going to work and yeah just take those screws and put them back very simple i think they are different size screws as well so yeah maybe don't mix them up maybe get a um little parts tray or a magnetic mat to help make things easier for yourself there now we'll grab our new battery a lot of these come with adhesive on the back so just peel off that little bit of tape there and then stick it down and you want to put a little bend in the bottom where that where the thing clips into the motherboard as well just like that and yeah since we are putting a new um hard drive in this we're putting an m sata drive in this one i'm pretty sure and a lot of those have exposed components on the back so what we want to do here is we want to 
put captain tape all over the back of that housing just so that none of the components on the um, MSATA drive will short circuit with the back of the housing. I mean, you don't have to do this, but it is a nice little precaution to take because you don't want your iPod just turning off randomly or a short circuit to occur and then you've fried your hard drive or something else. So yeah, I'd recommend doing this part. Yeah, so simply just cover it like that in captain tape. Now plugging that headphone flex back into the logic board, just undo the connector. And yeah, the connectors on this, they are kind of fragile, so just be careful with them, especially if this is your first time um, dealing with these types of connectors. So yeah, if you do break anything while doing this upgrade, it'll probably be those connectors. And yeah, before we install this new hard drive here, I'd just like to point out something with this flex cable. Um, as we talked about with the corrosion on the pads for the buttons earlier, the same thing can occur with these flex cables since they're 20 years old. Um, yeah, just the moisture in the air can sort of build a small layer of corrosion along the pins on these and that can prevent the um, new hard drive from making proper contact. So what I usually do is I'll take these out and I'll just give those pins a scrape back with the tweezers and then I'll grab a cotton bud with some isopropyl alcohol and I'll just um, yeah go over it with that as well. Yeah, so when it comes to putting new hard drives in the Classic 5th Gen, we've got a couple options here. Starting on the left, we've got probably the most premium, the iFlash adapters. Um, yeah, I don't usually use these because of their price, um, but they are probably the most premium. They're specifically designed for the hard drives and the iPods. So yeah, they're usually, well, they're the best quality. I think they consume the least amount of power and they have a bunch of different options on their website. Uh, this one specifically is the iFlash Quad and it will allow you to put four micro SD cards in the iPod. But again, that does cost like 60 bucks just for the adapter, maybe more. It might, it might have been like 90 bucks. I can't remember. Whatever it is, it's expensive. Now your other two adapters you've got here are the, um, the CF card adapter from AliExpress. You can get these for like less than five bucks. And then what you can do from there is get either a, um, a CF card or a CF card to SD card adapter and then put SD cards in. It's another good option. And then on the right here, we have our MSATA adapter. And an MSATA drives are, this is like computer hard drives pretty much. And these, that's probably the, the most reliable form of storage, but they also consume the most amount of power because yeah, they are designed for laptops and desktop computers. So yeah, an advantage of these is you can get these in very high capacities. They're pretty cheap as well. So I usually go for either the CF cards or the um, MSATA drives just because they're just cheaper. I like the AliExpress adapters. They get the job done. I've never had any issues with them. Maybe a faulty one here and there, but you know, if you get a faulty one, you can just buy another one. And it's still way cheaper than getting your um, iFlash or whatever. So, yeah, that's what I usually go with. I'm pretty sure in this one we end up using the um, MSATA drive. But if you want max battery life, um, I think your best bet is the SD card option. So you just go for the, um, the one in the middle, the CF card adapter. Then get your CF card to a micro SD adapter and then get two SD cards. Or, yeah this one is a dual sd card adapter you can get single sd card adapters as well but yeah well you can go for a straight up cf card but if you want more than about 64 gigs it's probably not the most economical way to go about it because yeah a 128 gig cf card is kind of expensive and at that stage you're way better off just buying a micro sd card but yeah just have a look at all these options before you attempt this and just see what, what one you like the best. I always just go with the cheapest, to be honest, because this is an iPod. It's literally just reading music. And at the end of the day, you're not going to really notice much of a difference in terms of speed or anything like that. You just want the one that's the cheapest and that consumes the least amount of power, pretty much. Yeah, so if you're using this thing every day and you don't mind dropping a bit of money on it, then maybe just go for an iFlash to be honest, but yeah, you don't need to do that. All the other options work just fine as well. Don't think just because it comes off AliExpress that it's no good. It's absolutely not true. They work just as well. 
So on this one, we choose to go for an MSATA adapter. Uh, probably not the most power efficient of the options here, but reasonable price. And plus, um, you can get real high capacities with these as well. Probably the most reliable option here as well. Yeah, these MSATA drives are designed to take lots of reads and writes. So you're not going to kill it putting it in an iPod or anything like that. Whereas if you use some cheap SD cards, maybe they're not designed to be being constantly used as a hard drive all the time. But yeah, no, they all should hold up in these the iPods aren't very demanding of a use case for any of these types of hard drives anyways so should be all good um yeah but one thing to note about these AliExpress adapters is that the clip there can sometimes fit very loosely with your uh, flex cable so yeah I have a little fix for that I usually just put a layer of captain tape on the underside as we will do in this video and that'll just make the connection a lot tighter um and a lot less likely to come loose or fall out or anything like that so yeah i just recommend doing that if you've got one of these aliexpress adapters here you definitely don't have to do that for an original hard drive or for a iflash adapter because i'm pretty sure the iflash adapters literally use the same connector from the original hard drive in some cases they may even be taken directly from them because they look like an original part so yeah if you get that captain tape on just use the scissors and make sure you cut it down flush because obviously if it protrudes at all then the pins may not make proper contact all right yeah just take that and put it in simply as we do here there is a little bit of adhesive on the uh the bottom of that flex cable there so just make sure no adhesive has made its way into the bottom of that connector otherwise you may have some connection issues just put that whole thing back um yeah so if you close up the ipod at this stage what you'll find is that adapter will just flop back and forth because it's just sitting in there loosely and you want to have a way of adhering this thing down just so it doesn't rattle around inside the ipod there so what i like to do is i will just take some bits of captain tape and we'll place them over the logic board side here and then we'll grab some double-sided tape and place that on top and then we'll grab a bit of foam off of that original hard drive and we'll put that on top of the double-sided tape and then we'll put another piece of double-sided tape on the back of the adapter and then we'll just adhere that down and that will prevent yeah and that'll prevent your hard drive from wiggling around in there and just make sure that the top of that adapter is down enough in the ipod so that the battery won't interfere with it when you close the whole thing back up and yeah now all we got to do is seal the thing back up so just open up your battery connector if you haven't closed it just being gentle and careful because that is probably the most fragile part on the whole thing you can very easily snap the brown clip on top or you can even bend the whole thing off the logic board as well it is fixable if you do that but just don't do it is my advice and now just clipping that whole ipod back together which is a very simple process the whole thing should just snap shut I'm just cleaning some gunk out of the port here as well. Quite often you can get hair or pocket lint that just builds up in the bottom there. Not hair, I mean dust. And yeah, just turning the thing on now. Should get an Apple logo. And then eventually it should bring you to this screen here. Yeah, it should bring you to the connect to iTunes screen. So once you see that, simply just plug it in to iTunes. iTunes will come up with the uh, I think it's recovery mode or something and it should just say reset iPod just click reset it'll reinstall the firmware and you should be good to go and at this stage we're pretty much done yeah I've got some stickers and stuff on the back here so what I like to do is just give the whole thing a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol just to get it in good condition again and yep now we're done now you got a fully upgraded iPod classic 5th gen with brand new battery brand new hard drive brand new front plastic i know we didn't do the buttons or the back in this video but you could do those as well yeah so this ipod probably has the biggest range of aftermarket parts available for it you can pretty much buy every single part on this ipod on aliexpress in new condition from buttons to front plastics to the backs and you can get them in all different colors that they didn't originally come in either so and for that reason this is probably one of if not the best ipods to own in 2023 just because you've got so many different options for how you can restore it oh uh, yeah and something else to mention with these ipods there is a difference in the amount of ram that's on the uh, 30 gig version 
and on the uh, 1680 gig versions. Uh, the 30 gig version will only have 32 megs of RAM, while as the thick version, the 1680 gig, will have 64 megs of RAM. And in terms of real world usage, what this means is there will be like a limit on the max amount of songs you can get onto the iPod, because the iPod can only store so many like track titles in the RAM or whatever. Uh, yeah. So for the 30 gig version, this means you can get between probably 20 to 30,000 songs on. And for the thick version, it's probably roughly 50 to 60,000, something like that. Yeah. But those are just rough estimates as well. So if you have that much music that you want to put on, just keep that in mind as well. And there is a way around it. You can install this third party software called Rockbox, which you'll be able to put as many songs as you want onto the, um, onto whatever storage capacity. So if you're interested in that, you can also download Rockbox. But I've never ran into any of those issues because I don't have 20,000 songs. So probably a bit of a niche problem because, yeah, I don't know how many people's music libraries is that big. Seems pretty large, to be honest. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one. Thanks for watching. Check out my eBay store where I sell these iPods fully refurbished. So if you don't want to fix it yourself, you can always just buy one from me. But um, it is Australia only postage at the moment. So I also sell all the parts here in the video pretty much. So if you want like the adapters or new battery, I've got all that stuff available on my eBay store. Um, yeah, Australia only postage again. But um, yeah, it's probably quicker postage to buy it off me than what it would be to buy it from China off of AliExpress. But um, yeah, you could also go from AliExpress. It might take a month to get to you, but it's probably probably be like half the price of what you can get locally so yeah that's another good option um yeah so thanks for watching hit subscribe hope to see you next time bye